Life Audio. Hi, friends. This is Bonnie Gray, and I'm your host for Breathe, the Stress Less podcast. I'm so happy you're here. We can pause and rest together. And we have a special show today. We're going to be talking about love, Eros love, which is romantic love and sensual love. We're exploring the four loves that we find in the Bible as we celebrate this month of love. And our last podcast for episode 17, we explored the concept of philia, which is brotherly or sisterly love. And we talked about friendship. I wanted to start out with friendship because the basis of a relationship that will move into romance and sensual love, the basis for a successful marriage is in fact friendship. Now, why do I say this? Well, I received a gift when I first got married and it was actually a really nice gift. I ended up using it and it's called the seven principles for making marriage work by John Gottman. It's a practical guide from the country's foremost relationship expert. And I found it to be very useful. I grew up in a family that was broken. My father left when I was seven and I grew up with a single mom. And so I actually had no idea what a wonderful, loving relationship actually looked like on a day-to-day basis other than what I saw on Little House on the Prairie, watching Ma and Pa and Laura and the Ingles, or maybe Brady Bunch. So I really treasured the wisdom in this book because he had followed newlyweds from the time they were married decades into their marriages. And he found what were the ingredients that made a successful marriage while others fell apart in divorce. So this book talked about the seven principles about making marriage work. Now, what we're going to talk about on today's show is I'm going to connect God's word with some of these principles, and then I'm going to give you some soul care tips. I'm going to give you three, three soul care tips based on scientific research, which is guaranteed to release happy hormones, serotonin and dopamine to help breathe new life into our romantic and sensual relationships. So this will be a fun episode. I've not done one of these before, so I welcome your response and your input. So follow me on Instagram at the Bonnie Gray as I share words of affirmation connected to this week's show about romantic love as well as soul care challenges. I'm going to give you three, okay? And I want you to try them. There's this theme that keeps ringing through my mind and my heart, which is from Psalm 34, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Our faith is actually a verb. It's not just a noun. It's an action verb. So we need to put feet and wings to our faith. And in the area of making marriage work and cultivating a romantic relationship, it begins even when we're dating and we're being friends. So we want to cultivate that friendship. I'm going to tell you more about what I learned as, um, let's see now, I'm coming up 18 years of being married. I want to focus our talk today on how to breathe life into our romantic relationship because we are going to find there's an emotional bank account that every relationship has. So it doesn't mean that couples that are close in intimacy, whether it's emotional or physical, it doesn't mean that they don't argue or um, quarrel. Some ingredients which invested in their emotional bank account, that's what got them through the hard times. So I'm so excited. I want you to follow me on Instagram at the Bonnie Gray. And I also want to direct your attention to sign up for my breathe newsletter because I want to send you the links to these studies and these resources so you can reinforce what you are hearing. Go to the Bonnie Gray.com slash 
subscribe and you'll get my Breathe newsletter. En la cabeza de Laura durante un Mythic Live. ¿Qué es lo que voy a decir? Hola, soy Laura, amo la música y siempre estoy cantando canciones de los 80. ¡Ay, qué vergüenza! ¿Quién está listo para el quiz musical? ¿Algún fan de la música de los 80? ¡Claro que sí! ¡Yo! Con Mythic Live conoces solteros de forma diferente. Descarga la app de Mythic si tú también vas en serio por algo bonito. El 9 de junio. Los humanos y los dinosaurios no pueden coexistir. No te pierdas en cines el épico final de la era Jurassic. Hemos generado un desastre ecológico. Lo que importa es lo que hagamos ahora. Jurassic World Dominion. ¿Por qué siempre tienen que ser más grandes? 9 de junio exclusivamente en cines. I am wondering, have you gotten a love note before? Whether you're dating and you're single or you're married, do you remember a love note that you received? I remember the first time I got an email from Eric. I read it over and over again, and it wasn't even more than a few lines. How are you? It was nice to talk to you. I remember the shape of the paragraph, how the sentences wrapped around the return of a line. And even though I couldn't even hear his voice, his words placed a conversation in a quiet corner of my heart. I couldn't see him, but he felt near. I call them digital letters that Eric wrote to me. He had visited the singles ministry group at my church. And from that first time he came, he started sending me some emails and they were very simple, but they collected like beads of morning dew on clover. They didn't need to be many to make my heart happy. And his words stayed with me. This was a love note. Isn't it interesting how something so simple as a love note can help us separate ourselves from the stress of a day. You know, I still remember I was in meetings and working and all the stress of work and politics at work. It seemed they were far from me because of that love note that I received. And so we want to inject more of these kind of love notes into our relationship to nourish our relationship with our romantic Um, dating life, if there's somebody special, God may be having you in, or in a marriage, your spouse. And one of the things I wanted to share with you is the scripture, the scripture that's going to be directing this whole concept of love. Well, the word eros is the Greek word for romantic love. What about our God? What does our God say about romantic love? To do that, I went back to the Old Testament and I looked up the word for beloved. You know that very popular passage, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. That is found in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16. And that's our scripture for this week. It's going to be the motivation for the basis of the three soul care practices and the challenges I'm going to ask you to try so that you can taste and see that your love is good, the love that God has given you. So I want you to try it. There's going to be three, but it's based on Song of Solomon's, I'm my beloved and my beloved's is mine. When I double clicked on beloved and I searched for all the times that beloved was used in the Bible, it was mentioned over 206 times. Interestingly enough, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, that's the verse that's the basis of this wonderful song. Have you heard of the song, The Blessing? Look it up on Spotify or on iTunes and listen to it. It's so popular during this pandemic because it's just this reminder that God says, I am faithful. I will bless you. I keep my promise. I keep my covenant. Interestingly enough, it's the same beloved word that we see that is used when Jacob loved Rachel and Isaac loved Rebecca. All these like amazing love stories, right? So let's look at what are the things that can increase that attraction, that fondness, that affection that comes through beloveds, where your beloved is yours and you are your beloveds. Okay, well, one of the first things that I want to talk about is 
touch. Touch is such an important love language. It's one of the five love languages I talked about in our last podcast in developing and nurturing friendships. Well, it's definitely number one in terms of a marriage. It's that loving touch. Without any words, we can communicate to our significant person. You are important to me and I like being with you. Now, one of the things about hugs, I was just so thrilled to learn this. Well, when we hug others, we hug them when we're excited, happy, or sad, or we're trying to comfort them. And so hugging is universally comforting, but we often think of that as a person who's receiving the hug. Well, it turns out the hugging is proven to make us healthier and happier. According to scientists, the benefits of hugging go beyond that warm feeling you give when you hold somebody in your arms or when you feel somebody in your arms. Hugs actually reduce stress. They reduce stress by showing your support. Scientists say that giving another person support through touch can reduce the stress of the person that is doing the hugging and the person that's being comforted. Not only that, hugs can boost your heart health. This was an interesting experiment. One group had romantic partners hold hands for 10 minutes and then followed up with a 20 second hug. While the second group who sat in silence without holding hands, well, the first group showed a lower reduction in blood pressure levels and the heart rate was at a resting rate compared to the second group who didn't hold hands. So Make an intentional awareness to hold hands, hold hands, and then to give hugs. Now, how many hugs a day? I actually just made this up because it seemed to make sense to me. I've told my kids and even my husband, I said, well, we want to eat three servings of fruit a day minimum. Well, we need hugs just like we need our vitamins, our vitamin C's to boost our immunity against sickness. We also want to have good immunity against discouragement. So we need three hugs a day, morning, noon, and night, or morning when you come back from school and then evenings. And then same with my husband. So how many hugs do we need? Interestingly enough, a family therapist named Virginia Satir once said, we need four hugs a day for survival. Isn't that interesting? How many hugs? Just be aware that is a wonderful way to give the gift of touch. And it's one of the, you know, love languages, right? Now, interestingly enough, God says that we are his temple. And I love this quote from Thomas Carlyle. There is one temple in the universe, the human body. We touch heaven when we touch the human body. And so it's just a wonderful reminder that it nurtures physical intimacy. It starts with the hug. Now, many of us are really stressed. There's so many difficulties going through with the pandemic and having to parent with distance learning and jobs and political division and news and all this. Well, the second practice I want you to try this week is called letter writing. I want you to write a letter to your spouse. You know, we're such strong thinkers and so we will easily ruminate. And that's when we obsess about situations or relationships and it leaves us depressed or anxious. But one way that's proven to reduce rumination is to foster positive thoughts. Rather than telling yourself, stop worrying, stop worrying, think about positive thoughts. And so writing a letter to your significant other, that is going, I'm going to give you a prompt. You're going to write this prompt. I appreciate you for, and then share the quality that you appreciate about that person. This is a quick love note. And then I want you to share, I love how you fill in the blank. How did that person display that quality? I appreciate you for, and then I loved how you fill in the blank, how they showed that quality. And once that person receives it, not only is that person getting the benefits of words of affirmation, but you are also de-stressing because when research shows, when you write those letters to express your love, it activates a part of the brain that will release happy hormones like endorphin and dopamine and your depressive symptoms will decrease. 
And so it's good, again, just like the hug, it's good for your mental health well-being as well as the person who's going to receive that letter. Okay, so third is intimacy by turning towards each other rather than away. So time spent together side by side doing new things together. This is one of my most beloved tips that's really, really helped us, which is rekindling love and friendship by enjoying new experiences together. Romantic love in marriage doesn't have to fade. Scientists tell us that long married couples can rekindle romantic love. How? by trying new experiences together. Brain science shows that new experiences activate the brain's reward system, flooding it with norepinephrine. Novelty, simply doing new things together as a couple, recreates the chemical surges of courtship. So instead of visiting the same places, maybe you can have an idea to play tourist for a morning or a day. Eric and I, we have lived here for decades and yet we've never biked across the Golden Gate Bridge. We've walked across it, we've taken pictures there, but we've never biked across it. So one day I surprised him with a bike rental (laughs) and it was fun. It was really fun just to laugh together. It's so important to develop new experiences together to keep that fire lit. Well, I am curious, what is it that you can do with your beloved side by side that's new? It can also be as simple as going back to get a donut. This is one of um, the extra bonus soul care tip I want to give you. One of the tips from this book I shared with at the beginning of the broadcast is called The Seven Principles of Making Marriage Work. And one of the common denominators they found in marriages that went on to be successful, even if they went through arguments, hard times, trials, and tribulations, is that they remembered their love story. He would ask a couple, do you remember how you met and why you fell in love? The couples that had that emotional bank account continually invested in, they remembered. And in fact, it's going back and doing things that you once had done for your honey. Well, get back to the donut. I used to love to pick up a donut and drop it off for Eric. I loved donuts as a kid. And the other thing I used to do is I love gummy bears. I would stop by the candy store and surprise him by putting little candies at his doorstep so when he came home from work, he would find them. These are just simple ways that we can really love on our spouses. Remind them that they are beloved, they're special, and they're chosen by us. So we expend so much energy during the dating phase to try to kind of pursue love and the whole attraction dating chapter. But why is it that once we start becoming parents and just weighed down by the everyday life, we forget that those things are still so important. We still want to love our significant others the same way that we did when we first were drawn to them. And that's just a wonderful wonderful way to remind us of the importance of cultivating those small little rituals. Um, If it's evening and the evenings, we like to have a cup of tea before we wind down and we just, that cup of tea is like this physical trigger for us to, a prompt for us to just chat and talk and breathe and just take a deep breath. Well, I'd like to end our time with Mark chapter 6 verse 31. You know, Jesus was just so busy. So many people needed him and he was so important. A lot of people needed help. And yet it says here, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. Jesus said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. That is my ending thought in encouraging us that we all are exhausted. We all need rest. And so the more you can encourage and create those opportunities with your significant other, the one you love to just get away and rest, the more it'll develop an ability to heal together. Think of what are the things that your partner loved to do when he was a child. 
and encourage him to enjoy those things with you again. And then as he gets filled up, you can share also what are things that filled you up as a little child and invite him into your world and to do those things together. Create that rhythm together. Uh, My husband and I, we had a date once a month when we got married. We got married in our 30s. So maybe it's because I felt like we didn't even have that much time as my friends in their 20s who dated a lot before they had children and got married later. So we had children. And so I just wanted to make sure we had our monthly dates. And when I had two children, we doubled it. We're like, we need to go every two weeks. And so now that the kids are older, they're teenagers and they can be home, we can be out for a dinner date. We now have a weekly date. Sometimes it's a breakfast. Sometimes it's just going out for pastries in the morning. Sometimes it's for dinner. But once a week, we have that time for us. What does that look like in your life? Every relationship has a unique rhythm. What is a good time for you and your husband, your beloved to get away and to just be in your own world. The two of you, you are his beloved and he is yours. Well, I hope that this has encouraged you to nurture this beloved relationship that God's blessed you with, that just the two of you shared two paths had become one or as you're dating, becoming one. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the love that you've put in our lives and the people that you have given us to call beloved. Give us courage to reclaim moments of love and peace today, small moments to make time to get away, and just help us to be inspired with new ideas to nurture the gift of touch, the gift of words, and the gift of intimacy by spending time together side by side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Next episode, we're going to be talking about storge, which is familial love, instinctual affection between children and parents. Invite your friends to listen and enjoy the series and follow me on Instagram at the Bonnie Gray. Sign up for the Breathe newsletter so I can send you those links to the study at thebonniegray.com slash subscribe. And please do leave a review. They mean so much to us and help us get the word out for this podcast. Thank you again. Remember, you're loved and you're cherished. You're worth it. Just rest. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Breathe, the Stress Less podcast, a production of lifeaudio.com and the Salem Web Network. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. To learn more about Bonnie Gray or to check out any of the resources she mentioned in this episode, just head over to her website, thebonniegray.com, or check out our show notes. This episode was produced by me, Kelly Givens, and edited by Stephen Sanders. A special thanks to our executive producer, Stephen McGarvey. For more Faith Toolkit podcasts, head over to lifeaudio.com.